Kyle Harrington, Assistant in Extension and Ivan's program, uh, also PhD student in Entomology and Insect Science. I've given a couple of talks similar to this, four or five talks recently. Um, so we'll start off with a test. This might be a little bit biased to people that have heard this talk before, but we're talking about alfalfa weevil and the damage that it does in alfalfa. So this is just to see how many people have come to other workshops. It might be a prize if you can get it. So if you have $215 a ton hay and it's going to cost you $18 to treat your field, what would be the threshold that you'd be looking for? Exactly a number. Exactly a number. Two. Not two. <laughs> Not four. One point three. <laughs> We're getting close. It sounds like a guess, but it's somewhere in there. <laughs> it would be a little friend. Concentrate 18. 1.4. Thank you. How do you do it? Anyone else? How do you do it? Uh, Jason, you want to pass on that mug? It's a little bit newer, it's less dense than mine, but it's a nice mug. So how do you do it? We've developed an app for this, all right? So it's very simple to be able to use out in the field. We have an issue. We've done multiple years of trials to figure out what the factor is of the reduction. We identified it as looking at specifically large larvae. So again, that 1.4 that was pointed out is just large larvae per sweep in the field. What kind of sweep? 180. Thank you. 180 degree sweep. Correct. Yes, it is 180 degree sweep. So if you're doing 360s, I'd recommend not getting dizzy in the field. Um, either do 180s or divide that by two to get your two 180 degree sweep. 180s are a lot easier moving forward in the field, not sweeping the same area that you swept before. <laughs> so we developed the thresholds. You can go down across on these. It's basically what that app is doing. It's just using a, a, uh, an algorithm that's just going and sliding across and then generating that number for you. So you can use these if you want to. I can distribute them, but obviously, as you can tell, the app is a lot easier. So did everyone get an agenda or a folder? Inside that folder, there's going to be a business card. If you didn't get a folder or you need one, please raise your hand and we'll get one out to you. So inside that, on the back of that business card, you'll find this QR code. So we're gonna go through that. So for what I like to call the cool kids or the Android owners, we'll go through the steps on this one first. So you can keep that card, you can keep it in the truck. If you're out in the field, you're a quarter mile away from the truck and you've now counted your sweeps in your sweep net and you go, okay, well, this is how many I have, is this the threshold that I need? Well, card's back in the truck. So this is going to show you how to make it a tile on your phone. So you don't have to worry about the card anymore. It's still a nice card. You can pick your teeth with it if you need to, if you've lost your toothpicks. Um, but this will make it so that as long as you have your phone on you, you'll be able to use this app. So you're going to, have to scan your camera over the QR code. It'll pop up a little notification saying, go to a website. You'll click on that. If you have Samsung and it's taking you to Chrome, there's these little three dots in the top. You're going to click on those three dots, you'll drop a drop down tab, you're going to click add to home screen. You can then rename, it'll have a real long name there, a Qualtrics name or something, you can remove that name and you can rename it whatever you like, Weevil app, sounds good. And you're going to click add and that'll put it on your home screen. So now you don't have to worry about losing the card. You'll always have this available right to you. You don't have to worry about it. You can bookmark the page if you want to, once you do the QR code. And this just keeps it as a tile on your phone. Click and go right to it. For your people that have partially eaten fruit phones, otherwise known as apples, this is how you do it on the apple. So you do the same thing. You go into your camera, kind of slid over a little bit. There'll be a little box with an arrow pointing up and you'll click on that arrow, and then you'll select the one that says add to home screen. And then again, you can rename it whatever you'd like to be, we will calculate or we will threshold, we will app. And you'll click add in the top right corner there. 
And on your Apple phone, this will make it a tile in your Apple phone. So now that everyone's got it, or we've already gotten one, sorry. But now that everyone has this available, we can all see where you got that number from. What if you had $180 ton hay and $13 to treat? One point three. Hand this back to that gentleman. One point three. What? Large larva. Again, so we're not counting the small ones. You'll see on that app when you go to it, when you scroll down, there'll be that identification: the difference between the small and the large larva. We're doing this based on large larva specifically. So don't count in the small ones and add in that number. Count only large weevil larva. And that would be your number for that. So I don't have the image on here, but again, if you have the app open, there will be an, there will be an image. If you scroll down, generally the large are going to be green. There will be some differentiation in the color. Um, some of them can be a pink hue or just have molted, so they haven't gotten the phloem of the alfalfa, in them, so they're not green at that point. Any other questions identifying the difference between small and large? So if you're looking at the dorsal line, it'll be faint on the small larva. It'll be much more noticeable. And you'll have a white dorsal line running along the backside from the head down to the tail tip. I have a question. So you say if you only large, well, if you go see the field today, I mean, I've already sprayed it because so many of those sprayed. The amount of time it takes a small to go large this time of year, say January, and then you go to March, that number is dramatic. Correct. Yeah. So, given it, they are right, like a lot of insects, they're, they're temperature dependent. Um, so, it, it's going to take anywhere from 10 to 17 days. If the temperature is a little bit warmer, they're going to do it a lot faster. So closer to that 10 day mark, if it's cool enough still, they'll still take more time to digest and gain more food. And then it'll take them a little bit longer. But yes, if you're seeing the small in there, that should be telling you as a PCA, as a grower, continually to regularly check your fields. Don't look at it and say, oh, well, I've got small I'll come out and three weeks later and see if they're large. Now, if you've got them in there, that just tells you now you need to be monitoring more frequently. Staying in the fields. Well, with this, this hay price, like it looks like it's going to be insecticides, apparently are going to be difficult to come by. The, the, the threshold is going to be pretty damn low. Well. Yeah, it's it's generally so that's where we changed the threshold, used to be 15 to 20. Yeah, nobody nobody used to want to drive by, the, drive by the field and see it half eaten up. And right. It isn't like that. It's just this is changing the whole damn thing. Right. And that's where this changes that. So it's not based on every single farmer is going to have different value for their hay. Some guys want to have a contract. They're getting the same amount from a dairy for every single cut throughout the year. Some guys have a broker. Some guys are doing the open market on themselves. That's why this changes. So it's an economic threshold and the economics are the key point of it. It's going to change based on your value of your hay and based on what that specific grower is willing to pay for that treatment. Seems to me though, with this market, it's pretty strong. Hay is, hay is really high. Regardless high. of how you mark, right? And some guys don't have a better deal than others. Nobody's going to want to see much damage. Correct. One of my guys said that the threshold this year is warm. It could be for him. Yeah, it could be as low as that. Um, and that's another point he where. One, one, one sweep, he can't want him to be. Oh, that, that's a little. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that's a little adventurous. Um, if, if you, I'm not saying to overspray, I, I don't want to say that at all, but go, going more scientifically, if you're going to, if you're going to treat that early, the chances in the cooler season of you possibly needing to treat again could be very high. So again, if you're, if you're getting $200 a ton, hey, just for easy numbers, and you're getting two ton an acre, and it costs you $15 an acre to treat, well, now your hay isn't worth two hundred dollars anymore. It's seven fifty less than that. So now you're at one ninety two fifty. You treat again, another seven fifty. I mean, you're decreasing the amount that you're gonna see as profits. You can't afford regardless. Of, 
So the price is to give up much production. You yes. have to treat twice and you just have to treat twice. And this is this is where again the timing, timing is key and also pest identification and trying to trying to manage whether you're going to get lucky or not. If you've got aphids as your pest and you have weevils as your pest, there's a lot of guys that just try and say, well, I'll wait a little bit more until I've got more weevils and then I'll just knock them all out. You could be economically, you bring up a good point, you could be economically justified to spray specifically for aphids at a certain time, and then if weevils are earlier or later, specifically for the weevils. The other thing also we need to pay attention to is if we just spray because we cannot afford it, that can, you know, bring another issue that we cannot face, which is resistance. You already see signs of resistance in some areas. Not yet here in the central lab, but we have like our close borders. We have this resistance, and we don't have much, you know, uh, chemical groups that we can rely on mode of action. So we need to be a little bit careful because most of the time, what we spray the first time, the same mode of action most probably that we spray the second. That's a good piece of resistance. So we might end up with some situation like. In the north in California and some other places where like there is no solution. We, we may not be we may not be able to spray with the material with printer preference. Uh, because as well there's one entrepreneur asked me, where did you go? He had a question mark on what he was. He got attended he was a number two guy. Probably like you told me partner box. <laughs> All right, this is uh, Barrett Jackson week. I love Barrett Jackson, I love cars, a lot of fast cars. So now, by now, everyone's phone should stay at the lock screen, but let's not go too fast, guys. So we'll give everyone the same opportunity. So now, you found the app, you put the tile on your phone, hopefully it's on the lock screen. If it's $250 a ton, hey, like Bruce said, it's getting up there. And it's $14 an acre to treat. One. There's your one. In the whole field. No, one, one, one. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 you. Thank you. 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 The four quadrant and from each one you get five three. So you get 23 the three. So get a representative the number of larva on these 23. So get a representative sample. Don't just go into your field and do five sweeps and say, well, I've got one per sweep, because again, 40 yards away, you may do five sweeps and have zero. So do a representative sample of your field and let's treat based on science, not based on seeing one in the field. Kyle. What chemical did you use to figure this out? Because the efficacy to the chemical is going to make your number different. So that's the main, I'm trying to see if that was in there. And that, that was actually the main point of the study was that it was a threshold trial, not an efficacy trial. So in efficacy, we would assume or hypothesize that all of the treatments that we're going to use are going to decrease the populations and our untreated control is going to be really high. So I, I can't do anything if I've got five points down here and one point up here. I can't see what's going on in the middle between that. It's always just going to be a direct correlation line. So we use some products that we know work a little okay, some products that work a little bit better, some products that work a little better, some products that work great and knock them out completely. So that's where we're able to actually see those points and make that story with that. Or what are the chemicals that is working so far? It's still by the way that it's still working there, like warrior, still in all the areas. Still working good in, it, in our trials and also some commercial. We have still still working, but in higher rates. Like you, 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 in our trial, we are having uh, about ten ounce per acre. You can hit up to like eleven. I think we were still eleven working. in last year's. Yeah, we were so eleven. Still working there, and then that's that's mainly the two active ingredients that we have because we lost all. That's mainly the, the two active ingredients. Action that we're having. That's why I'm saying it's quite dangerous to exceed the amount of treatment that we don't need because it might encourage some of these. Uh, so, this was our the results from last year's efficacy. So, we had Warrior, we're working with 
a company on a new novel. So UA, A, B, and C. It is a novel um, compound, different mode of action. Um, we're still working with them to see when, when that can be registered. Uh, Cobalt, Besiege, and Lord's Band, and Stewart. So all of these are not significant from one another, but they are all significant from the under. Remember, Lord's Band is not. Is, is Band still working for you? I know you use uh, stuff. Yeah. So they have got a finer order. Yeah, finer is better. I think that's what we're at with Lord's Band. Well, with two pint. Two fine per acre and then again we're seeing it good up to about that three week time period and then that's about when it breaks how many days to harvest it at a quarter of an acre 20 months so we'll be right back 28 yeah <laughs> <laughs> you can't get the number two out of these equations until we get back in all right well for the sake of time we'll keep rolling here i'll be here so as much time as anybody has questions um,